Hey, hey friends. friends, I'm Grace Ann. And I'm Matt. And I'm Andrea. And we are GNA for today. We are two best friends living a faith-based lifestyle. And documenting it. Make sure you give us a follow on social media. We have an Instagram and a Twitter, and they're both at GNA for today, and those will be linked in the description. So this week's video is gonna be all about online dating, and we're going to be giving you our thoughts and opinions. Just a disclaimer, these are just our opinions. Um, a couple of disclaimers, actually. One, we're not being paid or um, sponsored by any dating apps or online dating uh, websites. So don't come for us if we don't promote your favorite one or whatever. We're not being paid to promote anything and we are not sponsored or anything like that. These are our honest opinions and our honest reviews on specific dating apps and then some specific dating websites. Also, we are giving our opinions. So if you disagree with us, then that's okay. You have your own opinion. You're your own person and you can form your own ideas. And if you um, don't necessarily believe the same things we believe, then that's fine because we're not the same people. But um, these are just our opinions and these are our thoughts and these are what we consider to be a basic Christian's view on dating apps. But if you have differing opinions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and start a discussion with us because we'd love to talk about it and get your opinions and your thoughts because it's always fun to talk to new people and learn new ideas and stuff like that. So first we wanted to share a little bit about our personal experiences with online dating and social media apps, uh, social media dating apps, excuse me. So I um, have used dating apps in the past. I have never used um, specific like online dating sites, but I have used um, like Tinder and Bumble, Coffee Meets Bagel, Hinge. I think those are the only ones I've used. Um, and then I downloaded Plenty of Fish for like research specifically for this video. Um, but in my experience, um, the dating app scene is not, A, I don't think it's very user friendly, and B, I don't think it's very Christian friendly. A lot of dating apps promote hookup culture, in my opinion, and I am not about that life, because I love Jesus, and um, I don't believe in sex before marriage, so I don't agree with that. So with that being said, I've not had a lot of luck on dating apps. I actually decided one day that I was like, when I was using all of these apps and stuff like that with no results, that I was going to delete them all because I thought they were taking up too much of my time and they were taking my focus away from my priorities. And it can become super easy to become like engulfed with these apps. And it can kind of feel like you're playing a game almost, like you could just swipe all day long. And I didn't like how dehumanizing that was, so I decided I was just going to delete all of them. Um, that's just my personal opinion. If you don't feel like it dehumanizes things, then that's great. But that's the way I felt about it, so I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to pass on this. I'm going to try and be more traditional. But, um, I did enjoy having them. I liked getting to talk to new people and hear, like, their opinions on things. And getting to have access to people that I didn't know, if that makes sense. It was nice to have different perspectives and talking to people from all different walks of life. But it was not something that... I was successful at. I never went on any dates based off of these sites and the people I met on those sites. So it just wasn't, it wasn't useful for me and it wasn't anything that I was experiencing a ton of joy from. So it's something that I have decided to remove from my life. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So my experiences with online dating is not super extensive. I had a Bumble for like a month or two and 
that was I just had a Bumble. I didn't have all the other apps. I know some people have multiple apps, but I just had a Bumble for about a month or two. And like, I didn't have a super bad experience on it, but I felt like it was consuming my time too much. And I kind of felt like I would get attached too easily. And I know that's not how like, the dating app scene is supposed to work but I felt like if I talked to someone for over like for over a few days like I would be like picturing myself with them and be like oh I really want this to work that's probably my fault and that doesn't really have anything to do with online dating but it's just important to know like what type of person you are and that's the type of person I am there was one guy where we talked for like maybe a week and I was like okay I don't want to continue this but then there was one guy who we talked for a couple weeks and I was like man I really want this to work and whenever it didn't I got pretty I wasn't like shattered like we had never met like we weren't in a relationship or anything but I guess I was just shattered because I wanted someone and I wanted something to work and whenever this one thing that I wanted to work didn't I was disappointed but I mean that's a me thing that's not a all that's not how everyone is but that's just how I am which so I guess I didn't have a super negative experience with dating apps I actually ended up I ended up deleting it after the things didn't work out with the one guy that I got kind of upset about it not working out with so after as soon as that was done I just deleted the app and haven't gotten one since because I got a dude now. Don't need a dating app. And we met in person. We didn't use a dating app. So one of the questions that kept coming up in discussion when Andrea and I were trying to plan out this video was, is using dating apps playing with destiny? Is it playing God? So we decided we would give you guys our opinions on that. And I've had people ask me that question before. Um, I didn't know what I thought about this question until after I sat down and like really, really, really thought about it. So here's my opinion. I think that there is a way to play God or play with your own destiny every day. And I think that is intentional because I think that's part of having free will. But I think there is a way that you can be using dating apps and not be playing with your own destiny or playing God. And there's a way that you can be using dating apps and be playing with your destiny and playing God. So here's what I mean by that. I think that if you, excuse me, that if you are a Christian, if you're a believer, and you are very devout, you are constantly fervent in prayer, you are completely guided by the Spirit, you know, if you are that type of person, and you feel led to use dating apps, then I don't think that is playing with your own destiny. I think that if you are fervent in prayer, fervent in study, you know, you're in the Word, you're asking God to lead you, and you feel like you are in the will of God, you are actively walking in what He wants you to do, and then you feel led to do such, then that's what God wants you to do. If you feel like you are in the will of God, and you're praying to be in the will of God, you are in the will of God. But I also think that if you are a Christian and you're letting dating apps or online dating sites to distract you from being fervent in prayer, fervent in study, um, and such like that, and keeping you from going to church or, you know, doing your regular day life, it's keeping you from doing your homework, keeping you from going to class, from checking your email, from doing anything like that, then I think you are 
not walking the path that you should and that you are probably using these apps to play with your own destiny. Um, I think that there's a very fine line and I think it's something that we just have to be very cautious of as believers. I think it's something that is difficult. Um, and I think it's something, I just, I really think it's something that we have to be, be praying about as believers and as we're walking and doing everyday life. I think if it burdens you to use an app like that, then it's probably something that you shouldn't be doing. But if it doesn't, and if it brings you joy, and if it is something that's working out for you, and if it's something that you feel led to do, then that's awesome. And I think that if you feel led to do so, then you are being led to do so. With the whole question of, is this playing with your destiny, and are you not trusting God if you are using a dating app? I've like struggled with that question myself. I'm not really sure if there's a right answer. I think it's how you go about it. You shouldn't be like, I'm frustrated because I haven't met anyone yet, so I'm gonna get on a dating app and I'm going to find my person, like, cause I'm impatient and I want this to happen now. Like there, that's one mentality and that is not the right mentality to have. But there's also the mentality like, if you feel like God is leading you to get a dating app and to date, for the experience of it, that's a thing and that's not a bad thing. God can lay on your heart, you need more experience dating so I feel like you could benefit from a dating app. I feel like the Lord could place that on your heart and I just realized my necklace is backwards. I'm sorry. The Lord could lay it on your heart to get a dating app and that could be the way you meet your husband and the Lord still had his hands in that situation and he was orchestrating it all and I don't feel like that is you not putting your trust in God because if God is leading you to get the app then that is trusting him. So starting with the positives, one major positive of dating apps is that it gives you a broader reach of people. Now by that I mean it gives you a broader mission field. So we all know as believers that we are called in the Great Commission to share the share share the world, tell the world about Christ, share Christ to the world. So in that, we can utilize tools such as dating apps to reach a broad range of people. Right? We can meet excuse me. We can reach people that otherwise may never hear about the gospel. So on apps and stuff, you can generally put whether you're um, a Christian, what denomination you are, you can put if you're an atheist, if you're agnostic, etc., etc. So I think that on dating apps that you could use that as a mission field. You can use that to share your testimony with others. You could, you know, match with someone who's an atheist and be like, hey, so I see you're an atheist. Why? Why are you an atheist? What do you believe? What do you think of creationism? What do you think about about Christ? What do you think about the church? What do you think about this? And it, it opens up that discussion where some people may never have that discussion, right? Because we often run in our same circles all the time and we don't we don't break those circles. But on dating apps, you can talk to pretty much anyone. So you could reach people who would otherwise just be hanging around those same people and may never hear the gospel. So I think that is a major positive. One positive of a dating app is to get dating experience and just to practice going on first dates. Dating is kind of awkward and I feel like the more you do it, the less awkward it can be. So dating apps can help you get that experience to not have all the awkward oh where should i stand like is he going to open the door for me like what if he holds my hand like that's just awkward and if you have more dating experience then that can eliminate that another positive for dating apps is that it could 
leads you to your future spouse. Now, I think that it could do this because of your limited search, right? So you can limit your search to just Christians or just, um, just people in my area, people within 10 miles of me, people within 50 miles, etc., etc. Now, I think it definitely depends on the type of app that you use, right? I think you should be using apps that support you, your uh, safety and etc. But you very well could meet your soulmate on a dating app and I think that's a huge positive. If God is, is leading you in that direction, he's probably leading your person in that direction too and if you meet there and, and God uses that, like that's amazing. So I think that's a, a major positive. So the first one is, unfortunately, not everyone is like-minded. So you could definitely meet people who don't have the same intentions as you and you could be talking to someone that you've never met before because you're talking on a dating app and you don't always know how truthful people are being on a dating app and they could be telling you what they think you want to hear but those are not their real intentions and the real desires of their heart and that's unfortunate because a lot of times you know that can lead to conflict or it could lead to you know harsh words etc etc um, but unfortunately on dating apps and stuff you aren't sitting across from a real person you're talking through a screen through a device so you can't tell if they're being sarcastic you can't tell if they're you know if they're mad if they're upset or if they're sad or happy or whatever um, so you you don't you can't you have no way of knowing their intentions um, so that is definitely a negative one negative that we really thought was a big negative for online dating is the fact that people aren't always the same online that they are in person. They will say all bunch of slew of stuff online that they will not tell you in person. And they, that's just like being a coward. And I feel like cowards thrive in the social media realm and the dating app realm because people aren't who they really are online a lot of the times. So that is a danger when it comes to online dating but I mean that can be eliminated once you go on a couple of dates but just going into it with the mindset of this person might not be the same in person than texting then that is the right mentality to have because you don't need to have your heart set on the way your conversations go on text because in person it can be completely different. So another negative and I would say that this is probably the biggest negative um, for using online dating or social dating apps is catfishing um, because that can not only lead to like you being hurt but it could lead to you being physically hurt and it could be a harm to your safety unfortunately like I said earlier we're not all like-minded and you never know who's on the other end of that device. And I hate that that is a thing that we even have to bring up because I don't, I, I wish that humanity was better than that. But unfortunately there are some people who will use social dating apps to prey on other people and to say they are someone that they're not just to get you to meet them etc etc okay so we're gonna finish up these last two points via iphone because i'm struggling so what i was saying about catfishing is unfortunately there are some people who will use social media and dating apps and stuff like that to catfish people so i think it's something that we need to be really aware about and really cautious about and if you're ever going on a date with someone that you've never met before make sure you have a safety plan uh, in place so that if something were to happen that you um, are taken care of and then the last negative that I have is that 
Um, it can be really easy to prioritize dating apps, just like social media, um, over your faith and over your work and over your schoolwork and stuff like that. So, um, I think you can, I think you, like, I know I can definitely get trapped and sucked into social media and dating apps and stuff like that. And it's really easy for me to be laying in bed and scrolling on Facebook and be like, eh, I'll do my devotion later. Like, eh, it's okay. I'll, I'm a little tired now. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll make up for it, you know. But I think that we need to be really careful when stuff like that happens because um, that is not where we want to be, right? We want to be fervent in prayer and fervent in study. And if social media or dating apps are distracting us from that, we need to, to be good servants and remove those distractions from ourselves and um, find better ways to um, achieve what we want to achieve and to find what we're looking for. So if you're in a leadership role in some sort of church or anything ministry related, being on a dating app with a bad stigma around it is not the best idea. So you all know of Tinder. That one is the one that has the biggest stigma of just being a hookup app. If you are the pastor, like a young pastor, I don't think an older pastor, most older pastors are married. If you are a pastor and you are 25 and you're like, I am not looking for just a hookup, I'm looking for an actual relationship and you choose Tinder, then that can, even if you have the right intentions behind it, that can look bad on you. People can, people will find, like, if you're on a dating app, it's not private. Like, people can find you. There's probably gonna be some people in your congregation that are seeing you and they're like, ooh, Pastor James, or whatever your name is, Pastor James is on Tinder. Yikes, I don't wanna be under his leadership. That is not good of them to judge like that and assume your thoughts behind it, assume your intentions, but you shouldn't, whenever you're in a leadership role, you should not get into any of the gray space. You should stay in the black or white and not give anyone the chance to judge you in a wrong way. So next we're going to talk about um, a couple of tips and then some um, of the more, we're going to talk about some of the more popular apps that are out on the um, market, out on the market. Is that like a phrase people use? Is that appropriate? Is that an appropriate phrase? Sure. Sure. Um, so my first biggest tip, my first biggest tip, that's not English. My first tip and one of the most important tips is make sure that you are using apps that give you more information than just pictures. You wanna make sure you're using apps that tell you their location, tell you their name, their age, um, ones where you have to put in a bio, where you can't just skip a bio, um, and stuff that tells you, you know, where they where they work, what they do for a living, if they have children, et cetera, et cetera, because those are things that you wanna know, right? Pictures are important, but they're not as important as your safety and making sure that you know that A, this person's in your area or that, you know, they're in your age range, et cetera, et cetera. Another tip is making sure that you're using apps that are not as socially popular, right? You wanna make sure you're using apps that, and I know this sounds crazy, you're like, what? I don't wanna use like the number one app or whatever. No, um, you don't wanna use apps that are gonna promote hookup culture, such as Tinder, et cetera. <music> to talk about Coffee Meets Bagel. So Coffee Meets Bagel is um, an app that isn't as like popular on the mainstream. So a positive with that one is it gives you a lot of information and it has a smaller user base. So you're more likely to find people who are actually wanting to go on dates. Um, and not people who are looking for hookups and stuff like that. I'm sure that that still exists on there, but um, from my experience, it's been a smaller pool of people who are genuinely interested in getting to know the person on the other side of the conversation and are genuinely interested in pursuing 
dating and marriage and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely less of a hookup culture app. Like I said before, Tinder is not the best app to use because it is mainly like there are some good people on there, but most of the people that go into it are going into it with the intent of just hooking up once and that's it. One of the reasons I don't like Tinder is because whenever you use it, it's like you see the picture and then you swipe left or you swipe right, good or bad. And literally like the only information you get is their picture and that is so wrong. Why, why is it like that? I have no, that really makes me cringe. I hate that. You should not be judging on whether you should talk to someone based off of their looks. That's why I like some of the other apps because they give like descriptions of how people believe and what they are and their interests. You should not base it off of their looks. Not at all. That is not a good thing to do. But that being said, that does not mean that there aren't some good people on Tinder and it doesn't mean that you won't find your spouse on Tinder because I do know some people who have found their spouses through Tinder, but because of the whole stigma around it, I feel like it'll be harder to actually find a serious relationship. If that's what you're looking for, you should probably try another app. Bumble is a lot better than Tinder because it shows like your interest and it shows how old you are, if you drink, if you're religious, how much you work out, little stuff like that, and has like little questions that you can choose and you answer the question and it's good conversation starters and I don't know if y'all are into this but it's kind of cool how the girl has to message has to message first some people might not like that um, it just kind of eliminates the whole creepy guy sliding into your DMs so you might like that you might not like that but if you are looking for that it's a good place to try to stay away from the creepers there are some creepers but it's easier to eliminate whenever you're using Bumble instead of Tinder because the girl is the one who has to message first. Another app that is pretty good to use is Plenty of Fish. Um, Plenty of Fish actually has photo regulations. So they um, say on there, you know, you can't post naked pictures. You can't post pictures with your face blurred out. You can't post pictures with more than like three or four people or something like that. Um, it also has uh, a pledge that you have to sign um, through the app, which obviously is just a button. I understand that, but it is, it makes you, makes it feel a lot more serious. Oh, and then they also um, work hard to really, really regulate that there are no minors on the app. Um, I think it doesn't even give you the option to put in a birth date younger than this current year's 18. Um, so that's good too, because you want to make sure that you know, you're staying in the legalness. Another popular one now, it's pretty newer, but we wanted to talk about it, is called OkCupid, okay OkCupid. Okay and that is a pretty good app. It's one of the better ones to use. It gives you a lot of details. It shows you actually your match percentage with someone else based off of the like questions that you have to answer when you're signing up for the app. So that's pretty cool. A lot of apps don't do that at all. Hinge is another kind of popular one and it's kind of middle ground. It's not as bad as Tinder, but it's not as good as Bumble or that um, something about bagel. Coffee meets bagel. That's what it was. Coffee meets bagel. It's not as good as that one, but it's not as bad as Tinder. One thing is it doesn't require you to have a bio, so some people won't have a bio, but it's better to have a lot of information whenever you're making decisions on if you want to talk to someone. So maybe if you want to find an app that requires people to have a bio, that'd be better. But Hinge is not a bad app, it's just the middle of the ground. A couple of dating apps um, that are more focused like specifically online they they probably have apps as well but um they're more like the the retro like online dating i guess um these are some apps that you apps and like online dating sites that you have to pay for um but if you are really seriously feeling like this is how you need to be looking for someone to date or someone to marry then um that would be worth it for you also it it's probably easier to meet people who are just as serious as you are on these apps because they have to be paying for the app as well. So uh, that that would, in my opinion, that would make these sites safer 
um, and more, I guess, like risk-free is the word. So a couple of those are um, Match.com, eHarmony, Christian Mingle. Um, there's one that's called Farmers Only. So if you're a farmer and you want to look for just a farmer, stuff like that. Um, there are also a lot of options on uh, Plenty of Fish, Coffee Meets Bagel, OkCupid, okay um, and I think even Bumble. But there are a couple of options where you can um, subscribe to these apps and stuff like that. So if you want to, uh, you know, be paying for an app and you feel particularly comfortable with one of these apps, then you could also pay for a subscription and it, it'll tell you, you know, if this person's a subscri subscribed member or whatever, and that could also help you sort of narrow and focus your search a little more. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really enjoyed this topic and talking about it. It was very interesting for us. So let us know what your thoughts on online dating are. We know that our beliefs and our views are not what most people in society think. So drop in the comments what you think about online dating and have you had good success, bad failures, like creepos, like bad first dates, sketchy things. Just let us know your experience with these. Make sure you hit that like button down below and that you hit the big red button that says subscribe so that you don't miss a video. And then on top of that, there's this like little bell and it goes ding, 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 ding. And you can click on it and that means that you will get all of our notifications, which means that you will never miss an episode, right? Like that's crazy. So do that because we're kind of fond of you and you're probably fond of us. So make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe and the bell. Next week's video will be all about keeping friends accountable and how you can do that, why you want to do that, etc, etc. So make sure that you have done all of those things so you don't miss it. Bye, Bye friends. friends! I got it. I got it. You ready for the outro?